Here's an important one for Erica and I. We really like talking about this because we feel that this is a very valuable. And Erica says something I want to start with, which is um, we're talking now about theater actors transitioning into film work. And you say about, especially the Mid-Atlantic area, that there are many fine theater people here. Oh, you there's let them hear that. fantastic theater. Yeah. Fantastic theater, especially in the entire D.C. area. I mean, it is... It's so exciting to me because, you know, I went to theater school. I have huge respect for theater. I love casting theater, too. And um, I've had many opportunities to do so in my career. And finding an actor who can analyze a script and thoroughly break a character down and discover night after night new territory in the world that they are pretending in is a skill that needs to be honed and brought to film. You know, I think theater is very much the ABCs of our creative arts profession, especially as a film artist. The, the theater really is the ABCs. And, um, and I think it's actually a fairly daunting yet simple transition because there are two very technical yet esoteric concepts in my mind that really take a theater actor into the genre of film or television. And the first one we've talked about is the energy exchange. I feel like a theater actor, performer, is the discipline is to reach the audience and to reach the audience with one's entire body. So the energy is put out by the actor and received by the audience member. And then, of course, the energy comes back to the actor with the audience's participation or reaction or whatnot. And it's kind of this wonderful cycle that goes out, but it is initiated by the actor reaching out. And I think film is just simply the opposite of that. I think that the audience, the energy is that the audience to the screen is reaching into the screen to discover that actor. And then the actor does return it a little bit with whatever's going on in the scene, but it's mainly instigated by the audience member, not by the actor. And the terms big and small, I completely disagree with because I think it's more about that energy exchange coupled with the fact that the camera is so close that it's not about uh, it's not about articulating through fingertips and toenails on a very general level. That's theater. That's the whole body. It is more about the thoughts right. and the density of the emotion. And, and here the emotion is big in theater, and that's, again, that big comment, right? It's big because it's wide. It's through the whole body. But the... Um, the emotion is dense and inside and someone hidden so that audience member can kind of look through the weeds and kind of find you on the TV and see what you're thinking. And those two things, yes, are simple concepts in a way, and they're also very esoteric, but I think that's it. I mean, maybe you yeah. have another one, but I think that's yeah. it. That's the difference. I'll start this way, is that you hear a lot of cliches about this, which is, okay, what's the difference between it? And one of the cliches you hear is, it's smaller, just go small, right? We mm -hmm. talked about this. Well, I think in every cliche, there's, a, there's obviously a kernel of truth. Yes. Well, and, but please listen to Erica. It's not smaller because what I've noticed in my coaching career is that when actors, good theater actors, go smaller, a lot of the times what happens is they they flatten out. It becomes well, it becomes really boring. Boring. It does not, you know, because they're not trusting that dimension. Right. So, because um, well, I always so, use like Lily Tomlin, right? L yeah. Lily Tomlin is a big actor, and she's completely filmatic, filmic, right. whatever the word is. She she's phenomenal, but because she's truthful. And There's and that's the, the difference also between There's the word. knowing how you like that's yeah. a, you know a seasoned film actor knows what they need to bring for an extreme close up versus a wide establishing right. shot too and that is different you yeah. know and so uh, I love Erica's word dense denser I say uh, for me it's, it is more concentrated deeper and I think it's this it's coupled with the next thing how does an actor do that technically mm. well it's trusting the fact that thought is action. And that's what you mean by it, it has to be real, honest with it. That you're not going to lie to the camera, so you can't fake the thinking. The thinking has to be real. It has to be your thinking. It has to be present moment thinking, and that's what the camera picks up. 
Uh, and so, but I, I think good theater actors already do too. that. You know? and, and I think here's what I, I is I, is that I see a lot of theater actors, and forgive me, I'm a theater actor for a way, highly trained theater actor, is that sometimes we get away with murder on stage because of the distance. We are not going to moment to moment. We're not going as deep as we, we are and really, really doing honest, real, fresh work. And we have to really test ourselves in that. Because this is why actors can make the transition back and forth, very good actors. Yes. So the next thing is dimensionalizing. We get used to what you're talking about, using our whole body. We've been reinforced that this is really good to use our mm -hmm. whole body. And yet, what can we do to make it honest if it's very small? And you can actually explore that. I have a test I do sometimes with my students. Uh, I give them a line. So maybe the one line is, uh, that is wonderful news, okay? Now I say, do it with the energy that is a big stage, 1500. That is yes. wonderful news. What I have to do it. Now try to do it as intimately as possible, like over a table, and just feel what's going on with your muscles. It's just re retraining the muscles to be able to relax, to have softer eyes, to really understand what that distance is. And so what I try to do with my actors is go back and forth between the two so that they understand they're using, as you point out, the mm -hmm. same kernel of truth, but just dimensionalizing it differently mm. and trying to get comfortable with both of them. You know, so it reminds me of, this is a silly example, but Pilates. Yes. Because sometimes you want a lot of weight. That's right. And then sometimes you want actually no weight. In, and sometimes it's harder with no weight because you're using your, you know. And so, so that's a great exercise. To really find out what that dimension is. Yeah. You're really talking about a dimension. Can I be very comfortable in this dimension and knowing that's all I need to do? To convey a real active yeah. thought and process. Yeah. And then I think the other thing that um, at least I found, because I love auditioning true theater actors, and, and I'm always honored when it's their first film or television audition, actually, I'm like, yes, I'm going to find the next you know, <laughs> star from a theater that's going to be translated into film and television. And um, is that the audition for film and television is its own genre, and it's quite different than being on set and performing. And, and I actually don't, I, I know it's, it's called performer and performing, but I'd rather call it being. <laughs> and and yeah. being on set versus being in an audition, because those are two very different genres, yeah. and very, they take a different skill set, honestly. And in some, in some ways, I feel like it's quite unfair, because auditions are, are so, um, not only are you talking about that density, and not only are you talking about the energy exchange, but you're also having to imagine the entire environment around you in this audition setting, and when something physical happens, you're, you're manipulated by it, but in a very small way, and yet on set, you might actually make a, a dash across a room, but in the audition, you're just not gonna do that. You're gonna sit still in a chair, or stand still, you know? I think bottom line, the best advice would be what Erica said fairly early on here, which is that radiating out as opposed, uh, as opposed to let them come to you. Mm. The more that we as theater people understand, it's really about let the audience come to you. Let them witness what's going on. The better, I think that's a really good start to uh, the shift in mentality, what's going on. I think so. I've um, challenged a few people in the past at a couple of our um, workshops or intensives that have dealt with this and I've said I dare you for a whole day to walk around and let everyone come to you and not reach out once to someone and see what happens see if you can just be a magnet and draw them to you and it's fascinating it's fascinating doing that exercise to see what happens just Absolutely. down just down on the street yeah. see what happens you know do people look at you yeah. Do people do people react in some way? Are they drawn to you? You can do that. I mean, I think that I think Michael Caine certainly touches upon that in yes, a great deal in his yeah. in his book, and um, many people have have amazing um, exercises to right. to access it in different ways. Well, if you know his great work and and his text, he has a video. He has another cliche that he's really really operating under. He talks about. He, he spends a, a fairly good amount of time talking about the eyes, mm. you know, the eyes to the, you know, the to the soul, and uh, you know, it is a cliche, but it's very true. What an actor does on film with his his or her eyes is yes. most important, and what is uh, uh, is trusting that uh, I'm enough in this, and that, mm. and, and, uh, and that I'm drawing to them in the sense of what I'm, they're seeing in my eyes, 
is something that's honest and real and moving forward in the script. I think that's the thing, and in closing, I think that's the thing that um, I've repeated more and more to theater actors that, of course, are, are you know, this is a new genre coming to te- film and television, and they get very nervous, and I say, it's just enough for you to exist and breathe. Mm. That's literally all that's ne- necessary, and I believe that wholeheartedly. Yes, so the final cliche, I am enough. Mm-hmm. I am enough.